It just had a hold on him. He would bet on anything. He was a very likable person, um, you know, just a good father, a good family man, but he just had this one box. In February 2000, Bobby Hurt was found dead in his car. He was 48 and a problem gambler. The coroner said that he had taken his own life. He left behind a wife and two children. He gambled quite a bit. He would be gone for long periods of time. He kept coming home with money and kept coming home with money and I knew there was something wrong. I've been told there's no such thing as a gambling problem. There's no such as an addiction to gambling and I'm here to tell you, I have lived through it. Nick Wright held a responsible position at a local hospital. A good salary enabled him to provide well for his wife and young son. That is, until he was caught embezzling from his employer to support his gambling habit. He spent 19 months in prison. In 2005, gamblers lost more than $80 billion on everything from horse racing's triple crown to the heartbreaking flip of a card. A federal commission in 1999 estimated that gambling cost the country about $5 billion in bankruptcies, lost productivity, and other social costs each year. Those who study and treat compulsive gamblers estimate that about 6 million to 8 million adults in the United States have serious problems with gambling. Though hardcore gamblers often do not seek help, recent studies suggest their numbers are growing. Many people see gambling as a harmless form of entertainment, like a night at the movies or a trip to an amusement park. But Tammy Hurt and Susie Flanagan Wright would disagree. Gambling is an, it's an illness. It's no different than alcoholism or drugs. I found out that sin always involves somebody else. So uh, we may think that what we're doing only hurts us, but it, there's always others that are involved. Cameron was um, two and a half. And um, his father was in jail and he couldn't understand why his daddy didn't come home. He got to a place where in order to cover his um, uh, addiction or to be able to supply the money for his addiction that uh, he embezzled some money from uh, a local employer where he had a very good job. If they could just walk in my shoes to see how bad it is. He would bet on anything. Even when he was losing, he enjoyed it. It was almost like it was a separate kind of a life for him. And, and what's sad is that he did fight it so much and he just wasn't able to overcome it. And that's, that's what I hate about, you know, even the off-track betting parlor that just opened up here. Just the innocent people that, that don't realize how it gets started and, and can just consume them. You know, you think, well, somebody bet ten dollars in a slot machine or something like that that wouldn't be that significant but it was thousands of dollars and and I'm sure I don't know the tip of it you know what he spent but he he gambled at a very early age and um, and and I truly believe that's what killed him our church ought to be doing what Jesus would do and so um, you know it behooves our church and any church to begin to try to develop the mind of Christ so that we think like Him, so that it, during times like this that we can actually um, be Jesus to a Susie Wright and uh, to minister to a family like that that's going through a, a very difficult, a difficult time. Jesus said for us to love our neighbors even as we love ourselves. But gambling is based on the losses of our neighbors. To reap large profits for itself, the gambling industry preys upon society's most vulnerable people and leaves in its wake broken homes, bankruptcies, and addictions. And despite extravagant claims of all the good that can come from expanding gambling, new money is not created in the economy. Old money is only shifted, sometimes across state lines, but mostly from the local community. The biggest shift is from the poor to the already wealthy. You had the gambling, you had the lottery, it was gonna help all the school systems. I helped over at Pikeville Elementary with my little boys in first grade. We have to volunteer our time. 
I cut stuff out, I bring stuff home, I work on it because they don't have enough money in their system to pay for this. We've got a PTO, or PTO organization. We have to raise money for their playground equipment because the state cuts back on this and that. If they're making so much money off this lottery, where is it? You know, it is an illness. Um, you can think of it as fun. There are people that can handle it. There are people that can handle it. But all it takes is a $2 ticket like Nick had. You may think of it as fun, but in a split second, it can absolutely tear your life and turn it into a living hell. And for the last six years, that's what I've had. We need to reach our community for Christ. Uh, we really do. We need to uh, connect all people to Jesus. That's, that's what we as Kentucky Baptists, that's what we decided we're going to try to do. Now, when you do, this will have a major impact because if you've noticed in the last election, that they, they've discovered something now. People that go to church vote one way. People who don't go to church vote another way. People that go to church vote morals and, and they vote ethics. I'm, not, I'm sure that not everybody that goes to church is a Republican, Democrat, or whatever. But at least morals count to people that go to church. So as we reach our people, Jesus commanded us to do something after we reach them. You know what it is? It's to teach them. Then we've got to teach them the proper way to live the Christian life. And I'm just old-fashioned enough. I'm, I'm an old-fashioned country Baptist preacher. I'm a hillbilly. Okay, that's what I am. And, and I just happen to believe that, that uh, God wants us to have the abundant life. I'm just, I'm crazy enough to believe that God wants the best for me. And I just don't think that that includes uh, buying lottery tickets and gambling and, and trying to figure out a way to scheme to get my neighbors uh, money. Kentucky Baptists can have an important impact on the decisions made in Frankfort. Call, write, and email your legislators and the governor now to say you want to support a growing Kentucky economy without expanding gambling. Share your love for your neighbor by taking a stand today.